Hi, my name is Patrick. I'm a second year computer science PhD student at the CUNY Graduate Center and I will be reviewing the classic paper Rich Feature Hierarchies for Accurate Object Detection and Semantic Segmentation. So I selected this paper because it's related to my research and image understanding. In particular, I'm interested in the paper's approach to a semantic segmentation. So the paper addresses two problems in object detection. The first is to localize objects using a deep network. The second is to train a high capacity model using scarce label data. The problem of object localization involves localizing an object or multiple objects within a given image, like multiple pieces of furniture. The second problem of scarce label data means that there is insufficient amount of data for training a large CNN. So why are these object detection problems important? Between 2010 and 2012, the object detection performance on the Pascal VOC dataset had stagnated. At the same time, it was difficult to understand what a CNN learned. An idea of the paper was that hierarchical multi-stage processes for computing features could be more informative for various visual recognition tasks. The impact of the paper is that it proposes an approach that provides a rich hierarchy of image features, which provides an insight to what a network learns. Also, their approach closes the gap between image classification and object detection by showing that a CNN can generalize to object detection tasks. Now, I will give a brief history of CNNs. One of the first CNNs was Fukushima's Neocognitron in 1980. It was a biologically inspired hierarchical and shift invariant model for pattern recognition. One of the flaws of this model was that it lacked a supervised training algorithm. In the 1990s, CNNs were frequently used. One of these was Lynette 5, a CNN developed by Lacoon et al. to recognize handwritten digits. In 2012, Krzyzewski et al. presented a large CNN that was trained incorporating dropout regularization in addition to rectifying non-linearities. This generated considerably higher image classification accuracy. Between 2010 and 2012, most CNN approaches were extensively based on low-level features such as SIFT and HOG. For object detection, the better systems combined several low-level image features with high-level context. With regard to the paper, the author's approach employs a CNN as described by Krzyzewski et al. in 2012. It produces features via forward propagating a mean subtracted RGB image through five convolutional layers and two fully connected layers. The author's approach is new in the way that it extracts CNN features within regions of an input image. This approach is appropriately termed RCNN. Furthermore, the authors offer an effective approach for learning high-capacity CNNs when there is insufficient label data. The proposed RCNN object detection algorithm outperforms all existing methods on the Pascal VOC and ImageNet datasets. It improves mean average precision by achieving a value of 53.3% which is better than the previous best results on the Pascal VOC 2012. There are two technical accomplishments of the paper. The first is that it is able to perform object localization by applying high-capacity CNNs to bottom-up region proposals. The second is that it learns high-capacity CNNs for dealing with insufficient label data. 
This is achieved via supervised pre-training for an auxiliary task prior to domain-specific fine-tuning. This is an overview of the RCNN object detection system. It takes an input image, extracts around 2,000 category independent bottom-up region proposals, then it computes features for each proposal using a large CNN, and finally it classifies each region using class-specific linear SVMs. These are random samplings of warped training regions from the VOC 2007 dataset. All design decisions and hyperparameters were validated on this dataset. The detection average precision on the VOC 2007 test set using RCNN variants is displayed here. It contains the last three layers of the RCNN variants. DPM methods are shown as a baseline. As seen, all RCNN variants significantly outperform the three DPM baselines. To visualize what the network learned, units from layer pool 5 are illustrated. Receptive fields and activation values are drawn in white. Some units are aligned to concepts like text in the fourth row, while other units are aligned to texture. This demonstrates that the RCNN learns a representation that combines a small number of class-tuned features with a distributed representation of different properties. For results on the VOC 2010 to 2012 datasets, the RCNN was fine-tuned on the VOC 2012 train set. These are results on the VOC 2010 test set. The most relevant comparison is to the UVA and region let's approaches, given that the RCNN uses the same region proposal algorithm. RCNN achieves a large improvement in mean average precision while being considerably faster. The RCNN performs similarly on the VOC 2011 and 2012 test sets. The RCNN is later extended to perform semantic segmentation tasks. Here, the middle image shows the detected regions. The full strategy on the left computes CNN features directly on the warp sample. The FG strategy on the right computes CNN features only on the region's foreground mask. For the segmentation accuracy, the table on top shows results on the VOC 2011 validation set for three segmentation strategies. They are compared with the current leading semantic segmentation system, O2P. The table on the bottom demonstrates that the paper's best performing segmentation strategy achieves state-of-the-art results on the VOC 2011 test set. Now I will give a description of the RCNN design. The RCNN is made up of three modules. The first is for generating category independent region proposals for determining the set of candidate detections. The network uses the selective search method to generate the proposals. Each region proposal is then warped in the second module into a tight bounding box and forward propagated through a large CNN. This process extracts a fixed length feature vector from each proposal. Lastly, in the third module, a set of class-specific linear SVMs are used to classify the extracted feature vectors. One linear SVM is optimized per class and the trained SVM is then used to score each feature vector. So there are two properties that enable the RCNN to be efficient. One is that the CNN parameters are shared, which reduces the time needed to compute region proposals and features. 
The other property is that the feature vectors are low dimensional compared to approaches such as spatial pyramids with bag of visual word encodings. In terms of having insufficient label data, the paper's approach is to combine supervised pre-training and domain specific fine tuning. Supervised pre-training involves using a large auxiliary data set without image level annotations to pre-train the CNN. Domain specific fine tuning continues SGD training of the CNN parameters which allows the CNN to perform object detection as well as adapt to a new domain. To visualize what the network learned, a simple non-parametric approach is employed to identify a particular unit in the network and apply it as it were an object detector. The representative samples of these units demonstrate that the convolutional layers are capable of learning a diverse set of rich features. For semantic segmentation, three strategies are applied. The full strategy uses the entire warped sample to compute CNN features similar to the object detection approach. The FG strategy replaces the background of the warp sample with the mean input, leaving only the foreground mask for CNN feature extraction. The third strategy corresponds to concatenating the first two strategies. So I attempted to implement RCNN in Python using TensorFlow. I used the data set mentioned here and some sample code to detect and classify aircrafts and images. I trained on 2,218 warp samples and validated on 740 samples using the parameters listed here. These are results of the training. The loss was relatively low while the accuracy was very high. There were also no signs of overfitting or underfitting. So these are some of the results for the aircraft detection. The first row displays images with aircrafts that were detected correctly. This demonstrates that the model correctly detected regions corresponding to the aircrafts. The second row shows incorrect detection results. The incorrect detections may be a result of other objects in the image containing similar features or other properties as the aircraft. For aircraft classification, the goal is to determine if the warp sample is an aircraft or not. The first row shows aircrafts that were classified correctly as aircrafts. The second row displays aircrafts that were not classified as aircrafts. The misclassification could be due to the low resolution of some of the samples or the sample containing more than one aircraft. For the evaluations, 739 warp samples were used as the test data set. Despite some misclassifications, the aircraft classification accuracy was still very high. This demonstrated that the RCNN approach of the paper is appropriate and practical for the task of aircraft detection and classification. Here is the reference and link to the paper. So thanks for watching this video on the RCNN approach.